Is a Kindle scribe worth it? Let's get into it. So before I get into that, I do want to share that um, towards like the middle or end of this video, I'm going to share Kindle Unlimited uh, recommendations by black authors. I'm going to share 15. 10 of them are going to be books that I've already read and then five will be books I haven't read yet, but I want to read. And actually a lot of these books I didn't even realize were on Kindle Unlimited. So I feel like you guys will all really enjoy that. Um, if you already have a Kindle, this will be like still a good video for you to watch because you can just, you know, skip to the end of the video or if you don't have a Kindle scribe you can like listen to like my thoughts about my scribe um so yeah this is a, a very highly requested video because I've always been very 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 open about wanting to only read physical books like I feel like since I've started sharing like a year ago on um Instagram TikTok and YouTube all about books I just read physical books and up until October, I had never even thought about getting a Kindle. And then when I saw that Kindle scribes are roughly the same size as a hardback or a um, paperback book, I was like, okay, let me try and see if this is for me. So I ended up getting the Kindle scribe. Um, I have this cute little case, which I will link below. And I love it. Like, I'm not even like kidding when I say that. Like, I use my Kindle every single day. And I also don't think I would use my Kindle every single day if it wasn't a Kindle scribe. Now let me share why, to me, the Kindle scribe is better than a regular like paper white or something like that. Um, I will say I don't have a paper white, but my husband does. So I do know like the difference in a lot of like sizing and things like that because he reads on a paper white. Um, so I'm gonna share a couple things that I like about a uh, scribe that a paper white does not have. First off, of course, we gotta talk about the size. I feel like that's a huge thing. So the paper white, you can see this is the size of a paper white and this is the size of a scribe. And I love how the scribe is so big. So in comparison, look at the difference between the two. You can see one is a lot bigger and one is a lot smaller. Now, when I pick up a uh, regular uh, paperback book, you can see that obviously, the uh, book is definitely like a little bit uh, smaller, but it's not that much smaller. The case on the outside is a tad bigger, um, but overall the size of a paperback book is not really that much smaller than the screen size, which I love. But then when you look at a paperback in comparison to a paper white, you can see it's a lot smaller. And the screen, I'm not even like putting this on the size of a screen because the screen's even smaller than the actual paper white. Um, but the paper white is definitely smaller in size in the screen. So that is something that I think you really have to think about when you go to buy your Kindle. If you don't have one, you're thinking about getting a scribe. Do you want to have a smaller screen or a bigger screen? This definitely does fit into your purse, but I have to show you guys how my scribe fits into my bags because I feel like a lot of people just aren't aware of like whether this fits into my bag or not. Oh, so this is the bag that I probably carry with me the most. You guys see this all the time. I will say that this is not av available, unfortunately. Um, the business that this is sold from like doesn't sell these anymore but you can find something similar on Amazon so I will link that below so obviously the paper white does fit in the bag there's tons of room um, you can see that but this also fits in there as well and I think that there is still so much room in here you can see it doesn't stick out I can still button and zip up the top um, it is great now once I put in like my wallet into here you can see it still fits like if you are re wearing like a regular like tote or just like a regular purse size you don't have to worry your uh kindle scribe will still fit now if you're wearing like a or bring like a really small bag with you it probably won't fit but i feel like most people these days have like big purses big totes and things like that so it's not really an issue um so that's one big question that i feel like i get a lot um another thing that i don't think a lot of people talk about is that the Kindle Scribe actually has the longest battery life of any Kindle. So that for me is incredible. I bought this um, paper white for my husband back in, I want to say, I think it was the summer, I think. I think it was the summer. I think we were going to like Mexico or something. Um, and I bought this for him then. And he charges this pretty frequently because he like reads on it pretty frequently. I got this in October and I want to say I've charged it like maybe four times. Like I'm not even kidding. Like I 
it's been very rare that I've had to charge this. I will say sometimes I'll just put it on the charger like if I know I'm going somewhere. So like one of the times I charged it before I went to Chicago because I knew that I would be like reading there. Um, but yeah, this just like, it does not really need to be charged and I use this every day. I use it every morning. Um, whenever I am eating breakfast, I will read and I will um, read while I um, eat my food and obviously if I'm eating I need my hands so I can't like be flipping pages and Another time that I will always use it is every night whenever I twist my hair or if I like wash my hair or something like that I will also um, Use my Kindle scribe because it is very easy to turn the pages and you literally just have to like I'll hit it with my knuckle I'll hit it with my elbow whatever is available and It's I don't know you don't really realize how like annoying it is to turn pages with your book or to keep your book open until you get a Kindle. And I think that like everyone will love a Kindle. I recently bought, well not recently, I guess it was a couple months back, I bought my friend Alex that I think many of you guys know, I bought her a Kindle. And she always said she would be a physical book girl and now I think she uses her Kindle more than she even like reads physical books. But I think it's because the Kindle is just so like, it's so easy. And um, another thing that I love about the Kindle Scribe is again, so this is a hardback book and this is the Scribe and you can see it's really not that different in size. Like they're very similar. They're almost the identical in height. Um, just a little bit taller here, not much. And then there's like a little bit of extra space here. So again, if you look at the screen, like the screen size is, like almost like the exact same um, width of the screen size as a um, hardback book. So if you're just someone who really likes to uh, read physical books and you're like not really sure if you want to get a Kindle, I feel like a scribe is a great option and the scribe was really what drew me in because it's so similar to a physical or like a hard pack, hardback book or a paperback book. But I think the biggest thing that really gets people is the ability to write in your scribe. It's literally called a scribe for a reason. And it comes with this little like pen here uh, so you can annotate. I never annotate whenever I am like not using my scribe. And I think it's because to annotate, you have to like get a pencil, you have to get a marker, you have to get a highlighter. And a lot of the time I'm not reading in a space that's like conducive for that. Like I just am not thinking about like having a pen near me or whatever. With the scribe, it's already there for you. So it makes it very easy to like annotate your books. I will say I'm not a huge annotator in general, but anytime that I do, like it's always with my scribe. Um, but again, I don't annotate a ton. So if you're someone who annotates a lot and you enjoy that experience, um, I feel like you'll really like the scribe because you can't do that with a um, paper white. You can highlight, but you can't like, write with the pen and like make your own little notes and things like that, at least to my knowledge. Um, so yeah, that's a big thing that I really love. Um, but yeah, those are probably the things that stand out to me the most. And another thing that I really love just about a Kindle in general, not necessarily like a paperwhite or a scribe, is that you can have lighting that is gonna actually be able to help you read at night. Um, whenever I would only read physical books, I always had to carry like a little light with me and when I was in the car, like we drive to Brady's parents' house, which is like an hour away. When I was in the car, I'd have to pull out this little light, have to clip it onto my book. Um, whenever I would read at night, if he would go to bed and I wanted to turn off the light, it just was like not easy. Like I would have to go find the light, like cause I keep it in my um, nightstand, but like I have a lot of other stuff in there. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, I don't really feel like doing all that when I'm only gonna read for like 10 minutes. But with the Kindle, it has a light on it, but it's a light that is really conducive for reading. So it's not like a computer light, um, it's like a blue light. So you don't have to worry about it straining your eyes. You can always also turn it up or down. Um, and it's very, very like, I don't know, effortless. And I think that that's what I enjoy most about having a Kindle. So should you get one? I say yes, because I was always the type that was like, I'm never gonna read on a Kindle ever. I'm a physical book girly for life. But you can do both. Like in the same way that we listen to audiobooks and we read physical books, you can also read an ebook 
and or like read on your Kindle and also read a physical book. Like just because you have your Kindle, it doesn't take away from you being able to read a physical book. Like you can literally do both. And I do, I do both every single day. Usually I have one book that I'm reading on my Kindle and then one book that I'm reading um, in a physical like form and they're usually not the same book. Sometimes they are, like I read, um, what was the book? It was um, Hooked on You by Rihanna Ladeau and the physical copy, the words were so small that I was actually like, I think I might have my first DNF. Like I've never DNF'd a book and I literally was like, I like this book a lot but the words are so small that I just like cannot get through this book. I read it on my Kindle and I just finished it like that. It was so easy for me to get through, but I feel like if I had been reading it in a physical copy, I might not have even finished it. And I think that that happens a lot with books. Like if the book is too firm, it doesn't have enough flop and doesn't open easily, sometimes I'll be deterred. Or if the book's really, really like thick and long, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, that book's so long. I don't know if I'll ever finish it. But on a Kindle, you can see the page numbers, but like, the book, you don't feel it or see it, so you don't really get as like, I don't know, you don't get as, it's not as daunting to read. So I really encourage you to uh, pick up a Kindle or Kindle Scribe. I personally love my Kindle Scribe, but I do think paper whites are nice. Um, this is obviously more affordable than a Scribe, so if you're someone who you're not sure like what you want, um, maybe this could be for you. I just think for me, I knew I wanted the Scribe because I'm so like, I gravitate so much towards physical books that it was really exciting for me that this is similar in size. So whenever I open a book, let me show you like a recent book that I read. So you guys can kind of see like the difference in like the words because I feel like that's always nice to see that. I recently read The Teacher by Frieda McFadden and in the book, the words are so big. Like they're literally huge, <laughs> which I love. Like it makes me want to like, I don't know, be immersed in the book. And I feel like you flip through, through the pages really quickly, but also the page count is super similar to the physical book. So these are the words on the page. Um, I don't know if you guys can even see that. Hopefully it will like focus so you can. Um, literally huge, like you can probably read it from here. Like literally it's, they're huge, um, which I love. And then whenever you look at the paper white, they're definitely smaller. Um, I'm gonna pull up one of my husband's books. All of his books that are recommended to him, they're all about like banking and like money. And it's just so funny um, how he is like, you know, loves like self growth and development and all the things. Um, but let me see, he recently was reading Can't Hope Me, Hurt Me by David Doggins. Um, let's see, we'll pull, and then they also have like recommendations. So we'll pull up another book and I don't wanna like mess up his Kindle and like put books on here that aren't on here. Um, so I'm gonna to try to pull up something that's like he's already maybe read. Um, but this book right here, whenever I pull it up, you're gonna see the words are so small. Like these are little y'all, these are small. And hopefully it'll focus, there we go. Very small. And I feel like for me, that would be just like daunting to read. Um, because one is obviously really tiny and then one is like more spaced out, it's bigger. Uh, I just really enjoy it. I will say um, it just depends on the type of reader you are. So I don't wanna like deter someone from not getting a Kindle because they are like thinking of getting a Kindle um, Paperwhite. Just for me, I knew that I wanted to scribe. Um, so yeah, those are the reason I think that you should just get a Kindle in general. I think the battery life, the uh, reading light, the accessibility. Um, oh, I didn't even talk about one of the biggest reasons why I think you should get a Kindle. Y'all, you can get so many free books. Okay, they're not free. They're not free. They're not free. You pay like $12 and some change every month and Kindle has tons of books to choose from on Kindle Unlimited. And there are so many books being added like every single month. So you never really have to worry about missing out. So I think if you're someone who maybe doesn't have a ton of money to buy books every month, this is a perfect solution because yes, the Kindle is expensive itself. Like the buying it, I mean, you're gonna spend a pretty penny to pick up both of these, but after you buy it, once you've had it for years, it's going to like, it's gonna do its justice if you're a big reader. Like if you're paying $12 and some change every month and you read like, 20 books like me a month, or you read like five books a month. Like you will make your money back if you keep this and continue to use it for years. So 
Um, I'm going to show you guys some books that are on Kindle Unlimited so you can see that not only are there popular, book, popular books, but there are also books that are like by black authors, diverse reads, like they have so much on there. Thrillers, self-help, development, everything. Um, so these are the books that I have read. And these are the ones that I think you guys will be excited that are on there. Um, I will um, link the Kindle Scribe below and also the Kindle Paperwhite for those of you who want to pick one up. Um, also comment below any questions that you have about a Kindle and I will answer um, all of them for you because I just, I try to get back to every message and if I don't, I'll at least heart it. Um, but I do, do see them and I try to answer every question that you have. So if you ever have a question, uh, message it below or comment it below and I will answer. Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan was a five-star read for me. Um, this is also on Kindle Unlimited. Luca, my great Huffington, is on Kindle Unlimited. And this is actually what got Alex into reading this series because she, I think, read the first one and loved it. Um, and she, I don't think, had the physical book. And then she was like, oh my God, I'm going to eat it up because they're all, the entire series is on Kindle Unlimited. I also recently told my friend Heather to pick this up and she loves dark romance. And I was like, you will literally eat this up and I'm like it's free on Kindle Unlimited and she's like bet I'm 100% in it's on Kindle Unlimited like it's literally at the palm of your hand you don't have to wait until Amazon like ships something for you or a small indie bookstore has it in stock or a bookstore a small indie bookstore ships it to you like you literally can get it at the palm of your hand um Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson I really enjoyed this book as well it's kind of like thriller vibes um Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. You guys know I recently read this in my reading viral uh, TikTok books and this had a really nice uh, diversity, not diversity, disability representation in this book that I feel like a lot of books don't have. Uh, One Week in Paradise by Annie Starr. I thought this was a really fun fluffy read. I read it super fast and I think all three of her books are in there. Um, and then this one I think is less than 300 pages. So it's a per perfect summer read. I recommend it a lot. Um, The Coldest Winter Ever by Brittany Cherry is a book that I really enjoyed and it's on there and she's an auto by author for me. I literally read a book of hers every single month and I think Disgrace by her is also on Kindle Unlimited. Don't quote me on that but she has like a couple on there. Only for the Week by Natasha Bishop. This is a four star read for me and was obsessed with the characters, obsessed with the storyline and it's also less than 300 pages. This is on Kindle Unlimited. Like this is an author that like literally got popular off of TikTok, but she is not in Barnes and Noble. Like literally you can find so many good books on Kindle Unlimited that aren't in Barnes. Like Brittany Cherry just got her first book um, in Barnes and Noble uh, and literally it just got in there. But this and many more books are on Kindle Unlimited. So just because they're not like popular like in Barnes or like big bookstores and stuff does not mean that they won't be on Kindle Unlimited. Honey and Spice by Bolu Babalola on Kindle Unlimited, ate this up. I just love this book so much. I think I read this like two years ago. Fast by Bill Millie Belazar was a 4.5 star read for me and I talk about this so much and I always say it's gonna like break you apart, put you back together again, you're gonna cry. And I literally had no idea that this was on Kindle Unlimited until I was like looking for this video and I was like, this is on Kindle Unlimited, like you guys can read this. And it only has like 1500 reviews or something like that. Like. The fact that there's so few reviews of this book and it's still in a space where you pay like $12 and some change a month and look, like you can read all of these books that I've shown so far for that price every month. So it's just like really cool. I love Kindle Unlimited. Behind the Scenes by Christina C. Jones is on there. And these are all the books that I have read that I want um, to recommend to you guys because I loved all of these and they're all on Kindle Unlimited. And then um, I also have a uh, five more books that I want to share with you guys that I haven't read yet, but I want to that are on Kindle Unlimited. I think I had five, but maybe I'm like missing one because I feel like I wrote them all down, but like, I feel like maybe one of them is like, oh, okay. So the one book that I don't have, it's in my house somewhere. I um, think I forgot to put it in the stack is Hot for Teacher by Monica Fisher. That book is on Kindle Unlimited, which I was very surprised because um, that's also a book that I think just was released. Lipsticks and Camera Clicks. I just shared this book in my last video in my Amazon haul. Had no idea that this would be on Kindle Unlimited, and it is, which literally, like, this just came out this year. This is a debut author, I'm pretty sure. Like, how cool is that? And 
Uh, Outdrawn by Deanna Gray is also on Kindle Unlimited. You guys can grab this ASAP. It just came out uh, this year. A Worthy Love by A.E. Valdez. I haven't, uh, I've only read one book by A.E. Valdez and I wasn't obsessed with it so I want to try another book by this author because I always give authors multiple tries to like really pull me in because just because I don't like one book doesn't mean that I won't like the rest. So I'm excited to read this one and it's on Kindle Unlimited. Um, and Somebody That I Used to Know by Dana L. Davis is a book by a black author that is um, about someone maybe falling for their ex-best friend. And yeah, all of these books, literally all 15 of these are on Kindle Unlimited. And imagine, like you literally pay $12.99. And imagine actually if you walked into Barnes and was like, hey, um, can I get 15 books for $12.99? They would literally laugh in your face. But with um, having a either Kindle Scribe or having a uh, Kindle Paperwhite or whatever Kindle, and getting the uh, Kindle Unlimited subscription, you can get all these books and more, and more. Now there is, um, I think that these are books that you can't read over and over again, like I'm pretty sure, but for me, like I usually buy the physical copy anyway, like I'm just a physical girl, like I love a physical book, but because it's free on Kindle Unlimited, whenever I need to read in the dark, I wanna read outside as the sun is setting because it's been getting, thankfully it gets dark a little bit later, but it still gets dark pretty early. Um, and I get done with work at like five, so I can't like really read until later. Um, so reading outside at night as the sun is setting on my Kindle is what I do every night. Reading as I twist my hair every night, reading as I eat breakfast in the morning, like all of those things, like I would not be able to read as many books as I do without having a Kindle. So if you are someone who has been thinking about it, I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend it because I feel like you will be absolutely obsessed with having a Kindle and you'll read so many more books, like I promise you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some good recommendations and I hope this has helped you decide if you want to bring home a Kindle of any kind or if you want to bring home a Kindle Scribe, if you want to bring home a Paperwhite. Honestly, you can't really go wrong. I feel like they both are good options. I just think that everyone has like something different that they want out of their reading experience. And for me, Kindle Scribe is great for my husband and Paperwhite is great. And it really just depends, but either way, you're gonna love both of them. So uh, yeah, make sure you guys are subscribed. If you aren't, there's gonna be a new video coming on Saturday that you'll really, really love. Um, it's gonna be a long one. You guys did ask to have more like long vlogs. And I feel like if you're loving the long vlogs, we're gonna keep them coming. Like we're gonna keep them coming. So you'll get another long vlog on Saturday and I uh, feel like it'll be fun because there'll be a lot of friends in there. But also make sure that you are following me on Instagram because I'm going somewhere really fun with a book bestie and you guys know her. So you're gonna be like so obsessed like seeing us just hang out in real time um, on Saturday and it's just gonna be great. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.